big news out of Romania. A judge has ordered that Andrew and Tristan Tate will go to trial. This video will give you everything you need to know to understand why these guys are f***ed. The information I'll give in this video comes from the court documents of Andrew and Tristan Tate's case in Romania and the evidence we have that is publicly available so far. For making this video so much easier to put together, I need to shout out the account on X, at Crayon Murders. His account is probably the best resource on the internet to find accurate information on the Tate brothers' criminal cases in Romania. If you have interest in following the legal woes of the Tates, I recommend giving him a follow. What I would not recommend is listening to Andrew Tate or any of his circle. They finally submitted this indictment. It took as much time as they could. They took it down to the wire every minute they could to get this indictment together. And now the indictment's been put in front of a judge. And what has the judge done? The judge has picked up this indictment, looked at it, and said, this is garbage, let him go. They're bulletproof indictment. After all I just described, they finally put together a document that the judges instantly said, let him go, this man should go. A court in Romania ruled today a trial can start against influencer Andrew Tate. He's charged with human trafficking, rape, and forming a criminal gang to sexually exploit women. He and his brother, Tristan, and two Romanian women were arrested back in 2022 near Bucharest. Tate has over 9 million... Yes, it is true. Finally, the judge in Romania has ordered that Andrew Tate, Tristan Tate, and their two female accomplices, Georgiana and Luana, will go to trial. As of the recording of this video, we do not yet have a trial date, and this decision can and will be appealed by the Tate's legal counsel. Let's start off by clarifying what charges each of these people have because Tate cannot bring himself to tell the truth, even about this simple fact. This, this will be dropped. I'm not gonna be found guilty because I haven't done anything wrong. But, um, and if you don't mind me asking, what did they try to pin you for? They accused me of human trafficking. They accused me of using the lover boy method, which is convincing girls by being nice to do a job to take the money from the girls. Because I told two of my friends who are girls how to get big on TikTok. That's why all of this happened to you? Yeah. Just to clarify, I am accused of helping my friends get big on TikTok. That is what I'm accused of. I told some girls I know how to post on TikTok to become viral when I was at the time the most viral person on the planet. And they are saying I'm a human trafficker for that reason. It is insane. Well, we'll come to what you've been accused of. It's more serious than the way you've categorized it, but we'll come to that. Time for a little dose of reality. Andrew Tate is charged with forming an organized criminal group, human trafficking in continued form, and rape in continued form. The continued form you'll see throughout these charges means that these alleged crimes were committed more than once and over a period of time. All of these charges were upgraded to continued form in June 2023, which potentially would give them a longer prison sentence. Tristan Tate is charged with forming an organized criminal group human trafficking in continued form, and incitement to assault or other violence. The charge for incitement to assault come because the court documents show WhatsApp messages pulled from Tristan's phone of Tristan instructing Georgiana and Luana to hit one of the victims, which Georgiana later did. Georgiana is charged with forming an organized criminal group, human trafficking in continued form, assault or other violence, which comes from the assault of the victim that Tristan allegedly instructed her to commit, and unauthorized access to computer systems. This last charge comes because it's alleged that when one of the victims wanted to leave, Georgiana got into the victim's Facebook account and posted pornographic photos of the victim for a family to see, with the caption, this is how I demand money from all men. This charge is also backed up by the WhatsApp group chat between Tristan, Luana and Georgiana. Luana at this stage carries the least charges of the group, with the charges of forming an organized criminal group and human trafficking in continued form. 
It is fair to take Agitate's blatant lies about his charges as admissions of guilt. He could be honest about easily verifiable facts about the case, like what he's charged with in the first place, and just emphatically tell his fans that he's innocent of these charges. The guy is a clown. In the official statement released by Andrew Tate's team, the lawyer for the Tate said, The ruling issued by the preliminary chamber judge lacks legal basis and reasoning. We have filed a strong appeal as we believe the ruling to be unlawful. The lawyer for Georgiana and Luana said, The decision is unlawful and without foundation. I firmly believe that balance can be restored at the appeal court, where all our requests for evidence will be granted. So, unsurprisingly, it seems pretty clear that before trial, we will have an appeal. The statement concluded with, in the meantime, we urge you to refrain from speculating on the details of the case and respect the privacy of our clients. We are committed to ensuring that they receive fair and just treatment throughout this process. Given the privacy and respect that the Tates have offered the alleged victims in their case, including doxing their name, passports and addresses, and having their PR goons like Suleiman Ahmed lead harassment campaigns against them, quite frankly, they can go fuck themselves. There's one important fact about the Tate brothers' case that it seems like both the media and public are sleeping on. On top of the charges mentioned earlier, there is a second, separate investigation for another lot of crimes that has been ongoing. These are potential charges that weren't ready by the June 2023 indictment that were separated into a separate investigation. This means that in Romania, we could well see more charges and more victims on top of the ones that we already know about. The second lot of likely charges that are coming for the Tate brothers are money laundering, aiding the perpetrator, influencing statements, trafficking in minors, and human trafficking. Aiding the perpetrator relates to the two women who we saw release videos saying that they are not victims, the Tate brothers are great guys, etc. These women, named Yasmina and Beatrice, are still under control of the Tate brothers, and it's alleged that after their initial statements to Dicot, they were directed to change their statements to favour the Tates, Luana and Georgiana, and their new statements basically made no sense and were easily debunked. The influencing statements charge relate to Andrew Tate the genius being caught on the jail phone calls when he was locked up, instructing his cousin Luke and others to intimidate two of the victims and their families to retract their statements against them. It's hard to imagine this part of the story ending well for Luke, who funnily enough hasn't stepped foot in Romania since Andrew and Tristan were arrested. As for the shocking one, trafficking in minors, we know this one's attributed to Tristan allegedly trafficking a minor into prostitution. Minors in this instance means under the legal age for sex work in Romania, which is 18 years old. We don't know how many minors are involved and how underage they are, but of course, one 17-year-old girl being exploited in this way would be sick enough. Now for Andrew and Tristan's legal troubles in the UK and how it all ties into this. The first case in the UK relates to Andrew specifically, and it involves four women who accuse him of rape and physical assaults back in 2014 and 2015. Some of these alleged victims went to the Hertfordshire Police shortly after the incidents in 2015. They brought to the police very strong evidence when it comes to these types of crimes, including eyewitnesses which were willing to testify, and text messages from Andrew telling one of the women that he loved raping her, as well as this now infamous voice note. Am I a bad person? Because the, the more you didn't like it, the more I enjoyed it. I fucking loved how much you hated it. Turn me on. Why am I like that? Why? I am one of the most dangerous men on this planet. Sometimes you forget exactly how lucky you were to get fucked by me. Would you rather me pin you down and make you do things you didn't like, or would you rather fuck You didn't like that I was thinking I can do whatever I want to. That's what it is. I'm the smartest person on this fucking planet. Are you seriously so offended I strangled you a little bit? You didn't fucking pass out. Chill the fuck out. Jesus Christ, I thought you were cool. What's wrong with you? After this was reported to the UK police, and they had evidence provided to them, 
This whole thing was boshed horribly. The investigation dragged on, and the file wasn't handed to the Crown Prosecution Service until 2019, by which time the Tates had fled to Romania. Matthew Jury, the lawyer for these four women, explained in an interview with True Geordie why he believes this decision not to prosecute was political. Actually, mm. uh, Mike, I, I have deep concerns, which I've already expressed, that, that the investigation may not have been an effective one. And that the decision by the CPS in 2019 not to prosecute was, was, an, uh, was a wrong one. Um, we went back to the, the police in early last year, so early 2023, and they were very clear to us that in their opinion, there was sufficient evidence for Tate to have been prosecuted by the CPS and that they disagreed with the CPS's decision, right? We went to the CPS and said, are you going to reconsider your decision in light of the fact that Tate's been arrested and is being prosecuted for the very crimes he's alleged to have committed here in England? And the answer was a resounding, no, we're not. Now, I'm going to stress, this is just my um, opinion, but I believe that, that, that there is a chance that that was a very political decision by the CPS. Because how could the CPS turn around now and say, you know what, we got it wrong. We should have prosecuted him for um, the uh, alleged crimes he committed in Hertfordshire, um, or which were under investigation by the Hertfordshire Constabulary. We, sh- we should have prosecuted for th- him for those years ago um, and before he fled to Romania, where he went on to allegedly commit more crimes and where he has been the subject of an investigation and prosecution by the Romanian authorities that has likely cost the Romanian taxpayer millions. How does the CPS own up to that mistake now? I don't, I, I'm not sure that they can without there being very serious blowback. People don't want to lose jobs, which, which would be potentially the outcome of that, right? Because when you look into people, uh, when you look into cases that have gone like that, uh, people tend to lose their jobs over it so that they're not going to want to accept that. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't speak to that, mm. but I do wonder whether there, there is a, uh, a decision that's been made, which is, okay, so we, we're not going to revisit the complaints that were made to the Hertfordshire police and we're not going to prosecute those complaints mm. because if we do that, we've got to admit a very serious mistake that had some far-reaching ramifications. So what we're going to do instead is we're, we're just going to hide behind the fact that Bedfordshire is, has, has investigated the complaints by women under their jurisdiction and that the CPS has obviously decided to prosecute those complaints. The new ones, sorry. The new ones. Yeah. And then hopefully the Hertfordshire... We'll get them anyway, sort of thing. The Hertfordshire victims, we've got them anyway, so <laughs> that's fine. It's not fine. Agreed. It's not fine. Not, 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 not if you're a woman who wasn't believed, despite the abundance of evidence, and was essentially let down by the system, which then let Tate walk free, allowed him to, to, to I'm going to say, flee to Romania because he knew he was in trouble here, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and he's he's admitted that he's, he, been admitted he's admitted that. why he went to Romania. Yeah. He's even said the laws were more relaxed there. That's why I want to go there, yeah. where where he, where he allegedly set up a human trafficking uh, enterprise, mm-hmm. and. I, so I don't think it's unreasonable for me to have suspicions that the CPS realise they've really made a mess of this. Matthew Jury's clients are crowdfunding to bring Andrew Tate to court in a civil case. Until they have the funds they need to do this, I'll put a link to the fundraiser in the description of all my videos. Okay, now this is where shit gets really confusing. Last month, Aidan Ross read out a text from Andrew Tate on stream that could only be taken as an invitation to Romania before he flees. The group of us on Twitter alerted Matthew Jury and he contacted the UK authorities who then sent a request to extradite the Tate brothers back to the UK to the Romanian government. Now, the UK now, as they've seen that we're going to be found innocent in Romania, have decided to try and weaponize Romanian courts to put us back in jail, and that has failed, and justice has come through tonight for us, which is fantastic. But the Romanian judge did not find them innocent. 
Instead, she agreed to an extradition request from British police, who are investigating allegations of rape and human trafficking, as I put to Andrew Tate tonight. It was time for the Tate PR circus to take effect. One of Tate's representatives said of the extradition request in a statement that it was a bewildering revival of decade-old accusations that left the brothers dismayed and deeply troubled. This was insinuating that this arrest and extradition request was related to Matthew Jury's clients who had went to the police a decade earlier. This was completely false, and this narrative was very deliberate. All of the Tate's PR puppets, like Candace Owens and Suleiman Ahmed, went into full force to spread this narrative. Matthew Jury appeared with Jesse Weber on the Law and Crime Network to correct the record. And, and I'm and I'm. I want to finish it up on this note because I understand, Matthew, you have been speaking quite publicly about your concern over disinformation that has been coming mm -hmm. out. If you can briefly explain um, what you mean by that and how it relates to these recent developments. Well, I, I had the unfortunate um, uh, displeasure of having to watch some of Andrew Tate's so-called, is it what, emergency war room alert sessions or whatever he calls them. The other evening and it, look it's fairly fairly clear what they're trying to do is they're trying to suggest that somehow this extradition request is either as a consequence of of the civil case it's not um or it's connected to the hertfordshire victims our clients it's not um it's actually in respect of additional new complaints brought by additional women on top of the existing complaints and the victims that we already know about, thereby increasing the number of women who have brought allegations of rape and serious sexual violence against Tate. And that's what they're trying to avoid uh, people cottoning on to, that this increases the numbers of women who are out there who are saying that Tate raped them. This brings us to what I said at the start of this video that I was going to show. Why Andrew and Tristan Tate Fucked. To again cut through the bullshit, I'll refer to Matthew Jury, a lawyer who is actually involved in all of this. Delay, but for all their claims of, of uh, they try and spin everything as a victory, of course, right? When 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 the UK sought to extradite them, the extradition was approved by the Romanian courts. Let me stress that it was approved. It was just um, postponed until the end of the Romanian proceedings, and indeed, currently. Um, until the end of any um, custodial sentence that the Tates might have to serve at the pleasure of the Romanian prison system. That's standard, right? The Romania, Romania got there first. Let's put it that way. They started their prosecution first. They should be entitled to end that prosecution and let Romanian justice take its course before the Tates are extradited to the UK to face prosecution and potentially imprisonment here. But what it, what it means is, whatever happens in Romania, they're coming to England to be tried by an English court for allegations of sexual violence. So they could do time in Romania, get out, boom, you're straight into English you'd, you'd jail. You'd be coming straight from Romanian prison. You wouldn't get out. Straight from Romanian prison, on a flight, England, prosecuted here. If you... And this is where we are. The Tate brothers are done. Perhaps more done than even some of their critics realise. With all the social media circus, we must not forget the amount of people who have potentially been hurt in the path to where we are now. What we know of so far are seven alleged victims in the first Romanian case, the four that are represented by Matthew Jury in the Hertfordshire civil case in the UK, an unknown amount of victims in the second case in Romania, and an unknown amount of victims in the criminal case in Bedfordshire, UK, that resulted in the extradition. Which means we are looking at potentially victims in the dozens, so far, that have agreed to come forward. It's also important to remember that Tate has taught his methods to a network of men. Tate's disciples have already started being arrested for human trafficking, most notably with former war room member Vlad Obu. With this in mind, I believe that Tate's victims truly are in the hundreds. At this point, Tate's narrative that this is a matrix attack by the elites because he was talking about COVID and the Ukraine is beyond absurd.
I don't blame the young guys that are posting this on Twitter. Who I do blame are people with large platforms who must surely know better that are spreading this destructive message for their own gain. Notable examples being Tucker Carlson, Candace Owens, Patrick Bet David, and his stooge Adam Sosnick, and the quote unquote Christian George Janko. This is their legacy. They are scum. They must never live this down.